Ever since Little Big Planet 2 came out, people have been overwhelmed by all of the new mechanics. So I figured I'd take some time to make some quick tutorials to get people started. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a sackbot. You're going to learn how to control it. And then we're going to set the camera for it. And I'm even going to show you how to access uh, cinematic cameras uh, with the sackbot. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is place the sackbot. Now you can make any sort of costume for this, but there's one really important setting that you need to be aware of. Uh, right under the costume selector, there's a option to pick a custom costume, or you can have it copy from player one, two, three, or four. But what you want to do is set it so it says copy owner. That way, no matter who gets into it, it'll look like them. Alright, what you want to do is uh, think of the level that you're creating and change the expression type to something that's appropriate. You can change it later on in cinematic sequences, but since the player can't change it themselves, you'll want to sort of guide them through that. Um, if it's a scary level, make sure they're scared, and you can even, underneath it, change the intensity. Now a lot of these settings are just important for autonomous sackbots, so you're not going to have to worry about that right now. Um, walking speed is not affected when the player takes control, so it doesn't matter what you set this to. Um, these are all just for autonomous sackbots that are running around. Um, now the power-ups, that does matter. If you want your sackbot to be able to use the Creator the Grabinator, and other Controlinators, so your Sackbot can jump into another Controlinator. Uh, make sure you have these settings set. And you can even have it look at certain objects uh, that could be important. Um, if you're doing some sort of adventure game, if you want to sort of hint the player at what to do next, you can have them look at specific tags. Now you'll notice that there's a microchip inside of the Sackbot. Um, this is static, you can't change it, but what you can do is copy it and then you can make different emotions for different scenarios, like if you walk into a, a trigger and it triggers a camera, you can make them happy. Um, you can also change some of the other settings so they're situational. Okay, one of the first things we need to do is be able to recognize the Sackbot. So, the normal player sensor isn't going to work anymore you're going to need to place a tag. Now what I like to do is I'll label the tag so that it won't get mixed up with other tags later on. Setting labels is really important and you'll see why. Even though I've uh, placed down a, a green tag sensor, you'll notice that the sackbot isn't being recognized. So if you change the tag label to Sackbot, they'll match up, and you'll see now this shows you every single sensor that it's going to react with. This is extremely important because if you have a really complex uh, level later on and eight colors aren't enough, then you can have uh, a really complex logic. All right, let's bring this level to life and see what happens. So now you can see that I can control the Sackbot, and he's definitely scared. Um, everything else works except for the emotions, so it's going to be just like your normal character. But you'll notice as I walk out of the screen, the camera is still focused on this guy here, and we don't want that. So what we're going to need to do is create a movie camera. So you pick out a movie camera from your... Uh, toolkit and make sure that it's on the sackbot himself. That means it will originate from the sackbot so it'll follow him around. Then you check the settings. If you want to make it a high angle or maybe facing to the right, uh, you can do that as well. Then whenever the sackbot enters this tag area, it's going to activate the movie camera. So now you have a, a working movie camera that'll follow the sackbot. 
Now it's very important to check the settings of your movie camera. There's a whole bunch in there that can be kind of confusing. The first thing you need to do is change the hold time to infinite. Make sure disabled controllers is set to no. And then you need to make sure skippable is set to no. If you set this to yes, whenever the player hits circle, it's going to cancel out of that camera. Now let's say you're making a very uh, dramatic scene and uh, you need the camera to change up a little bit. That's going to be tricky, but I'll walk you through how to do that. So we have a microchip here. I'm going to place a new camera in there. I'm going to set the angle to something dramatic. And then what's really important is the transition type. You don't want it to just jump to this angle. You want it to be nice and smooth. So you can either do a hard pan or soft pan. And you can even do transitional keyframes uh, to make it the camera move along a path. So uh, let's set up a transitional camera. We'll set the first frame here. We'll set the second frame here. And then once it gets to this frame, it's going to jump back to the original angle. So we're going to bring that back down. Now because this is outside of the sackbot, it's not going to follow him. But if you want it to follow him, you take it off and you place it in the sackbot's microchip, just like before. Now we need to uh, call this camera. So we're going to make another switch over here. When the sackbot enters this area, it's going to activate the new camera. But then what's going to happen with the old camera? Because this one's activated, it's not going to change back. So what we need to do is make an OR statement. You get the OR gate from simple logic. Place it in the microchip, wherever you want. And hook this up to the original camera. So now the first switch is going to activate the static camera that follows the sackbot, and then we need another switch that will activate the original camera once you walk out of this area. The easiest way to do that is to just copy this and go down to Output and select Invert Output. That means that whenever it walks out of this area, it's going to activate the electrical signal that goes down to the OR gate and that will activate the camera and you'll see it worked instantly. So I'm going to jump back into the controlinator and show you what it looks like. So this is going to be a soft pan. See, and that was a little too fast. You can change that setting as well. But then once you walk out of that area, it goes right back to the original camera. 